Dear all, welcome. Welcome everybody to this incredible joyful day. We are celebrating OI Europe's fifth anniversary. It has been five utterly fruitful, exciting, highly productive, exhausting, amazing and wonderful years. In these five years, OI Europe has grown from a completely volunteer, unfunded organization to become an NGO that has donors that support us, staff that works towards making Europe and the world a better place for intersex people. And we have seen amazing things happening when it comes to community building in Europe, to policy and to the increase of visibility and awareness. During the course of this celebration, you will see and hear a lot more about all the things that happened. We will have live music playing and videos for you. I'm very happy and honored as a co-founder, former co-chair and now executive director of OI Europe to welcome you on behalf of the OI Europe co-chairs, the OI Europe steering board and staff, the OI Europe membership, the former steering board members and co-founders and the co-founders and members of OI Europe, the network to this wonderful event. Seems like a lot of people that I'm welcoming on your behalf of, right? Well, there are many more people who have played a substantial role in making the NGO OI Europe the organization it is now. OI Europe is about community. Unfortunately, not everybody can be with us today. But having this birthday party online means that um, not only all the European wonderful intersex people and their families, our friends and allies can participate, but also intersex people and friends from around the globe have registered and are watching. A big hello to all of you who have joined during the night or very early morning. It is great to have you here with us. Let's therefore not only celebrate YOP's fifth birthday, but the intersex community in Europe and worldwide. Now I'll give the floor to Irene, who will make a small announcement. Thank you so much, Dan. Hi, everyone. My name is Erin Kuziemka. I'm the secretary of OI Europe. And right now I will uh, start the slideshow, which will give you all a little glimpse of the so many moments of OI Europe's history. And also on the slideshow, you will see a little flag that says uh, that you have an option to donate to OI Europe and support our work. As you can see, if you go to oieurope.org slash donate, uh, and you can donate there and support our work. And uh, only today during this party, if you will donate 50 euros or more, uh, you will get a surprise package from us, which has uh, will include some really nice things. Like I personally would really like to receive it. It's very cool. So yeah, please don't forget to include your mailing address if you're doing a donation, uh, which is 50 euros or more. And while uh, our party will be going, uh, you will be seeing the slideshow with so many moments and so many beautiful art moments and moments from our history. And while the slideshow is going and you all now know about the donation, you can also find the donation link on Facebook in the description of the live video. I will give it uh, to my colleague Dan and then you have some words prepared for today. Thank you, Irene. Yeah, I was supposed to squeeze OIOP's history and the development of the past five years into a speech, but how can I squeeze all what happened into 10 to 15 minutes? It's impossible and I'm totally screwed. So I th thought I would start with community as being the centerpiece of OI Europe. Community is special to intersex people. As a community and as individuals, we have a record of experience, isolation, shame and secrecy, and none of that goes well with feeling safe and part of a community. But something has become very clear during the current COVID-19 crisis, if it wasn't already clear before. Once intersex individuals have taken the first small steps of reaching out cautiously, anonymously first, then slowly, bolder and openly, the intersex community starts to blossom and grow. And then this is the beginning of an incredible journey for the individual and in fighting for protection of intersex people's rights. This is why I want to start with a thank you for all the pioneers of the early days, especially those of the early 2000s that connected with each other through the internet and mailing lists. As many of you know, organizations Intersex International, or with, uh, with its legal name, Organisation Internationale des Intersexuels, was founded 2003 by Curtis Hinkle and registered as an association in Quebec, Canada. 
The now dormant association was an international network of intersex people, many of which had started to reach out and find each other in the days of the early internet in the beginning of the 2000s. Over time, language-based and later, interna uh, in later national OIs developed. But regardless of whether the they joined ORI or set up other networks, the feeling of having found a family across continents after years of its isolation was essential of the nascent global intersex human rights movement. With ORI, especially as an association spanning the globe and the diversity of languages and cultural backgrounds, this was an essential ingredient and so was the acceptance of diversity, bodily diversity and other diversity. To this came a very clear and unapologetic understanding of any intersex persons and any person's right to self-determination, to bodily integrity and autonomy, and a clear no to pathologization and medicalization. And that was quite rare in the early 2000s. As for OI Europe, you can see how this baseline has informed our work from the beginning to this state. I could go on and on how wonderfully the global movement has developed, especially in the past years, and how more and more intersex people from all over the world have begun to fight for their rights. But that is for another birthday, maybe, let's say, in 2023. But now let's talk about OI Europe. Once upon a time, in 2015 in Berlin, okay, wait, let me start again. Once upon a time in 2014 in Riga. No, wait. Once upon a time in 2012 on the 10th of December in Stockholm. Okay, I promise I won't go further back um, than that because we have another speaker who will cover those days. The days when there was only a small handful of individually openly intersex people and activists and intersex-led organizations trying to break the constricting grip of pathologization, isolation, negligence, complete lack of awareness and knowledge about intersex people and intersex human rights violations and rejections they faced from the powers that be and the general public in their home country by starting to work on the European level. But as I said, this is for another speech. We will go right to Human Rights Day, um, the 12th of December, 2012. At that time, the European intersex activism had already taken a bit of speed. After a few years of slowly introducing the existence of intersex people to European policymakers and or European human rights bodies. Many of us had attended the first international intersex forum in 2011 where activists from different regions of the globe, some of which had sometimes been in touch for years via email, saw each other for the very first time in person and face to face, which gave an incredible boost to our work. After the first forum, we felt that change was possible, and it was. Among the highlights in 2012, were the first hearing with the European Parliament's LGBTI intergroup, and also a meeting with the Commissioner for Human Rights of the Council of Europe, Ms. Muji Muzniek, both organized and advocated for by ILGA Europe and many smaller but nevertheless very important opportunities to raise awareness about intersex on a European level. But we were still working as individuals or as representative of our small national groups and organizations, despite the fact that we were delivering messages that came from a pool of shared experiences and mutual needs. It became clear that this had to change. We had to give this wonderful, while still very small European network a name. How convenient that 2012 we were all together at the same place in Stockholm at the uh, second international intersex forum. But we didn't take the decision easily. After all, starting something with Europe in its name was quite big. And we also didn't want to appropriate the title of a European umbrella organization. But then again, all European national OIs of that time were present in Stockholm plus affiliated intersex led groups. So we finally agreed that we would actually found a network of European OIs and that anyways, counting numbers, we made up for a big majority of intersex-led human rights organizations in Europe at that time. Like so many things in the early days and even for a long time after OI Europe was founded as a registered uh, charitable NGO on the 25th of September, 2015, all of this was a step-by-step -step process, one at a time. All of them with a long-term goal of bettering the situation of intersex people in Europe, but sometimes opportunity to take the next step pretty much around the corner. Which fast forwards us to the 8th of October, um, 2014, the first European intersex meeting in Riga. And you can see that I'm leaving out almost two years where we already saw the benefit of advocating under the name of OI Europe and with help again of ILGA Europe and TGU, we're invited to several very important high level meetings. An absolutely crucial funder meeting in 2013, 
and could increase, increase our outreach, gain new allies, and educate policymakers and stakeholders about human rights violations experienced by intersex people across Europe. And of course, the most important event of all, the third International Intersex Forum in Malta, 2013, the birthplace of the Malta Declaration. This declaration gave the international and the European intersex community incredible strength and a set of 17 joint demands with five additional calls directed to the governments of the world. These joint demands empowered us and made us stronger as individuals, as activists, as a network and as a movement. And now that I have mentioned everything I said I wouldn't <laughs> talk about, let's go back to the meeting um, in Riga on the 8th of October prior to the Ilga Europe Annual Conference. This meeting is a cornerstone of what happened today five years ago. The network Y Europe, together with its close allies, had worked on slowly increasing intersex visibility, waiting and hoping that at some point more intersex people would want to come out and actively engage in intersex activism on a national and European level. And then in Riga, it happened. New activists joined the meeting. Not many more activist organizations, but all of them from different countries and backgrounds backgrounds and hence enough to reach the critical mass. And this critical mass worked during this one day meeting on a long term vision and analyzed the strengths and weaknesses, the opportunities and targets, allies and threats of and to intersex advocacy and advocates in Europe. During the days after that one day meeting, during the actual conference, we sort of fell into a frenzy. While still attending workshops and plenaries, we started skipping them more and more to have time to discuss our perspectives, explore our activists' backgrounds, find the common ground, laugh, eat and drink together and write a statement of Riga. In the course of those days, I believe it was becoming clear to all of us that we were ready to take the next step, to found OI Europe as a registered charitable NGO and to make intersex activism in Europe equipped for funding and for the recognition that comes with being a legal entity in this world. And now we fast forward again. We will skip the first time an OI Europe got offered funding by a donor and we, not knowing about the specific procedures, sent in a full-fledged application written over the course of a few months, long before the process could start from the funder's side. I think they were a bit surprised. We will also skip the months of preparing the statutes and we will skip highlights like the consultations for the Maltese Gender Identity, Gender Expression and Sex Characteristics Act that aside from helping to create a still outstanding law led to the creation of the term sex characteristics as a protective ground for intersex people. We will also skip the consultations for the 2015 issue paper of the Commissioner for Human Rights of the Council of Europe with the title Human Rights and Intersex People. And the first ever study visit at the European Parliament in Strasbourg in the beginning of September 2015 and many, many more things that happened between October 2014 and September 2015 to finally land on the 25th of September. The rest, as they say, is history. In the past five years, Europe has changed. We now have a growing intersex community, one that is in close touch and currently helps each other through times of COVID. We have essential information on intersex translated in 28 languages and bigger documents in over 12 languages. We have community events and conferences. We have awareness raising campaigns every year. We have two resolutions, one from the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe and one from the European Parliament. We have the findings of the Friar LGBTI survey and the Eurobarometer, which both included intersex people for the first time. We are currently working on having intersex people and issues included as best as possible in upcoming European Commission strategies. We have member organizations in 20 plus countries across the Council of Europe region who support us and who we support. There is so very much that happened in those five years. The 25th of 2015 feels still so close, but looking at all of this, it seems like a lifetime away. Maybe all of this happened because we took one step after the other already before 2015 and allowed ourselves learning by doing on the way. Maybe all of it happened because we were creative. Maybe because we tried not to miss out on offered opportunities, but at the same time always checked them for their longer benefit, long-term benefit. It certainly happened because we learned a lot from our allies and at the same time from the very beginning, choose to only consider those our real allies who respected our expertise as intersex people and intersex experts. And of course it happened because OI Europe is built on activism that started before 2015 with its earliest beginning in the mid 90s. All of this and more has probably played a role, but the one thing I'm sure of is that it happened because it was a matter of love. Okay, it was also a labor of love, but it was a matter of love to ourselves and to the intersex family and the love for our bodies and for our right to self-determination that brought us here. 
We are all lovable. This wouldn't be a birthday speech without things, and there are so many to deliver. So I'll start just now. Thanks to our members for trusting us to represent them and fight for intersex rights on a European level. Thanks to all the co-founding members of OI Europe, the network, and of OI Europe, the NGO we have today, for all the decisiveness, strength, and resilience, and the willingness to take the next step. Thanks to all the board members who have been with us and steered OI Europe since 2015 for a lot of volunteer work. And thanks for creating, taking, and supporting all the steps necessary to transition the organization from a volunteer to a staffed organization. Without volunteer work, OI Europe would not have survived the first years and without staff, we could not do the work that we do today. Thanks to all the intersex individuals and their families who have attended OI Europe community events and conferences since 2017. You and all the intersex people and activists in your organizations and communities are the European intersex community and you rock. Thanks to all the people who have contributed to our Europe awareness raising measures over the year. And a special thank to all the contributors of the My Intersex Story testimonial book. We know how difficult it is to share our stories. And also a special thank to all the many intersex people that contributed to the awareness raising campaign workshop last year in the, at the community event in Zagreb, and you will all see in October by. Thanks to those policymakers, politicians, and researchers who have started to listen attentively and have become allies um, of the cause along the way. You are fundamentally important to ensure intersex people's human rights. Thanks so much to our current funders, Astrea, to anonymous donors, Australia and the Secret Rousing Trust, the Government of Malta, and most recently the European Commission through Horizon 2020 project. While Europe would not be the organization that it is, with first staff members and much better equipped to face challenges that are an inevitable part of change outside and inside the organization without your trust. Thank you. Last but certainly not least, many thanks to all our allies and collaborators, including but certainly not limited to the long-term ones like ILGA Europe, TGU, ILGA at GATE, and the Heidelberg Foundation, and many, many allied individuals. A true ally is an ally that lets intersex people and organizations take the lead on intersex issues, and at the same time supports the growing movement with its own human resources and capacity. You have been incredibly important and still are incredibly important for our work, and without you, we would not be where we are today. I would love to end this list of thanks with a special mentioning of individuals who have been companions for many, many years and have been with OI Europe, the network and an NGO on the pivotal points in the organization's development. I would love to mention these few of you, but how could I choose among you? You all know who you are and we, all of us, remember many, full, many wonderful incidents with you in our collective memory. Speaking about collective memory, my true final thanks are not spoken yet, but I'm speaking them now. Thanks to the international intersex human rights community. We are a part of you and together we will change the world. Happy birthday to all of us. Mm, now done. Yeah, mm -hmm. please continue <laughs> while <laughs> I'll soon start the video. <laughs> so um, I said already that we have uh, some, some videos for you. And I have the incredible pleasure to announce the first. Um, you know, one thing that we hear very often at OI Europe and say it often to each other when well, we find the time or take the time to think about it is we don't celebrate enough. And our allies say to us, you should celebrate your achievements more, really. It's good for your well being. And we agree. So now we want to make up for the lack of past celebrations. We asked intersex people, friends, and allies to shoot a short happy video, a happy birthday video. Um, and they did, and we got so many back, um, it was incredible. And we'll try to make them available. Of course, we first need to ask for consent um, on, on our website after this event. Um, for the party, we edit them, edited them into a shorter video. We'll see what shorter means, but it's a well-being measure, right? So let's get started. Well, dear OII Europe friends, Happy birthday, OII. It's really exciting. Happy birthday, OII Europe. A very happy birthday to everyone at OII Europe uh, from all of us at Eglio. Dear OII, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, OII Europe. First of all, I would like to congratulate OII Europe on its fifth anniversary. Happy fifth birthday, OII Europe. Oh, and happy birthday, OII. Happy birthday, OII Europe. Happy birthday, organization 
Intersex International Europe. I'm very honored to be part of this celebration for the fifth anniversary of OI Europe. Fünf Jahre OI Europe. Herzlichen Glückwunsch. Yay! Hello everyone in OI Europe. I just want to say a huge big happy birthday to the organization and to all of you involved. Five years of registration. I can't believe it. When I was doing research for my Council of Europe report on the human rights situation of intersex people, I had the privilege of meeting with several OII activists on many occasions. And the information given by them was of great value to finalize the report and for sure to convince my colleagues to adopt both the resolution and the recommendations. Without the help of OII Europe, this might not have been possible at all. Thank you, OI Europe. Joyeux anniversaire. What your network has achieved in such a short space of time is really breathtaking and inspiring. You've achieved so much in those five years, moving, not only moving OAI from an idea to an organization, to an organization with, you know, staff, budget, ED. Since the very beginning, the Heinrich Böll Foundation has cooperated with OAI. The community event in Zagreb last year, the kind of space that OAI succeeded in fostering it really moved me. I'm a lucky person who got to be in the front seat as a, to bear witness to your incredible journey. The intersex movement in Europe benefits from your work and needs your work. And so does the intersex movement in the world, I would say. And so it doesn't come as a surprise to me that you have seen so much success. I cannot believe it's only five years ago that we've printed the OAI statutes in the TGU office for the board at the time, the OAI board, to sign. Has it been that long? So much work that you've put into a very short period. And I hope this important milestone gives you all a moment to reflect on and celebrate all your successes. You can be proud of yourself. And I really can say that we would never be at the point where we are now as a national organization, as a community, without the support and the basic work of OAI Europe. We are family. Happy birthday, OAI Europe. I'm also very happy as a parent or as a citizen to know that uh, intersex organizations exist. And I strongly appreciate your translation work that encompasses 28 European languages. It was a a privilege and a real pleasure to work with all of you and it's been an amazing journey. I've learned so much listening to all the activists. Fünf Jahre OAI Europe. Happy birthday. I'm personally touched by your very positive images and messages. So just grateful to the planet to this planet uh, that I found uh, and met all of you. But also on a personal level, the work of OI Europe supported me a lot. You're educating a broad audience. You're going the extra mile for everyone. I've loved making friends through your organization and working with you, and I look forward to doing more of it in the future. Mm, and yeah, this solidarity between intersex activists is really great. And what an amazing five years of um, activism and advocacy. Having the opportunity to meet so many and such strong intersex people who really know their rights, it helped me so much in finding my own voice. We are not alone. I'm really happy we are celebrating this together. OAI is an amazing organization. You guys produce some really detailed, important work that's so essential to help everybody who advocates on behalf of intersex people. But also, I know from talking to people that some of the resources that you produce, such as the parents' information sheet and other sheets, has been hugely transformative for people on their intersex journey. So I just wanted to say thank you very much. Keep up the good work. It's a pleasure working with you and collaborating with you. And happy birthday. 
Uh, I say happy birthday to you, OII, also on behalf of the full board of NELFA and uh, our membership. Thank you so much, OII Europe, and have a great celebration. Dear OII, happy birthday to you. All the best and many happy moments. Let's fight together also in the future. I wish you a very good celebration and see you soon. And I'm really looking forward to build on that even further with all of you to the next five years. Happy birthday. Happy birthday OI Europe and all the best for the future. Thank you again for your work. My best wishes at this day that you should be celebrating that I'm looking forward to celebrate with you. Um, and all the best for the next five, ten, and maybe fifty years. So I wish all OII activists, staff, board members and friends a very prosperous future and once again a happy, happy birthday. And let's have a hell of a party. We hope you have a wonderful celebration today and look forward to many more opportunities to work together. All the best to you. Keep on with your work. And I wish you many, many more successes in the near future. A very happy birthday, OII Europe. Happy birthday and congratulations. Five years. Happy birthday, OII Europe. Yay! Yay! Uh, I just want to say that it was a real pleasure working on that video and it was so incredible to hear all the kind words from everyone and yeah just thank you so so much to everyone who have contributed to this video and also thank you for everybody who's writing amazing supportive words in the chat it really is so so nice of you and it means so much to us now it is oh thank you so much Evelyn and thanks so much everyone now it is my pleasure <laughs> to announce someone special. As we mentioned in the text description of the event, we will have some amazing intersex performance performers. And now it's my pleasure to announce Tino and the Emancipatory Jukebox who will perform for us right now. I hope, okay, there they are. Okay, just please turn on your mic, Tino. <laughs> beautiful. Hey, beautiful thank you so much hey. thank you very much for inviting me can you hear me yes it is an honor to play for you and i'm quite nervous um so happy birthday or oh, europe <laughs>
Okay, okay. Actually in German. And I wrote it like very long time ago. And so for all the others who cannot understand German, I just want to say about it that um, I call it like song for the children. And it is about having confidence, basically. Kleiner Sonnenschein, strahle durch mein Fenster auf meine Haut bis zum Baum. Kleiner Mondenschein, leuchte auf mein Bettchen in mein Gesicht. Bist so schön kühl, wo ich bin, begleite dir mich und er scheint in die ganze Welt, Tage und Nacht hinein. Ich bin noch gut bewacht. Sternenschein funkel in mein Zimmer. Du bist zu klein und doch so groß. Wo ich bin, begleite dir mich und der Schein. Die ganze Welt, wo ich bin, begleite dir mich und der Schein in die ganze Welt, wo ich bin. Tage und Nacht. Ich bin gut bewacht. Thank you. 
I can see your faces. I hope you like what I do. It's absolutely incredible. I have tears in my eyes. Don't say that. Oh, I start too. <laughs> because sorry, the next sorry. song actually is kind of a love song, um, an activist love song. Um, a Viennese activist love song um, that also um, wants to sorry have the message um, like like equal rights are not just handed over to us like that sometimes we also just need to take the streets and that's what it's about and it's also about yeah staying resistant Feelings 
summer of fall. People gathered to squat to salt yard. Right and wrong debates, a kidnapped gay, sleeping in trees. When the police came, at least we saved our vegetables. W. So now's the time that everybody who wants to can unmute their microphone if Irene allows that. Yes, I will. Now also ask everybody to turn on their microphone. Is they're okay with that? That's something that we can all sing together. <laughs> Goes like this. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> to you, happy birthday to you, you happy birthday.
Oh, please. thank you so much. I don't think Zoom can handle <laughs> so many. <laughs> this was fantastic. Thank you so very much. And I can tell you that the people in the chat were like moved, crying, excited. Um, it was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, um, you all remember maybe that I said that we would have a speech and a speaker that is very well equipped to dive into the past of the European intersex movement. Um, and well, this is what comes now. Please let me introduce to you Chris Günther. Chris is one of, of the early European intersex activists, first with Jean Priel, but also the founder of OI Belgium, a co-founder of OI Europe, the network, and of OI Europe, the NGO, and a former steering board member of, of OI Europe. Chris, you have the floor. Uh, okay, first, happy birthday. Uh, I don't want to talk to you, uh, uh, talk to you for too long with my bad English pronounced. Uh, why was it important to create uh, UI Europe? Uh, like many intersex people, I grew up in complete uh, ignorance of my situation and information a bit about Uh, I received, it was first the advent of the internet that I was able uh, to learn more. I would especially like uh, to thank Curtis Hinkle, founder of the uh, OAI, for cre creating a resourceful sit and form. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, just a few Europeans uh, participated in the speeches. Uh, it's very bad, I know. Uh, you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Chris. Uh, okay. Uh, also, activists mobilized by associating with existing local LGBT uh, organization, the impact was very small. Now, uh, uh, we added the E in many countries, so we have LGBTI. Uh, in 2011, uh, Ilga brought together activists from five uh, continents, allowing uh, life exchanges and develop, uh, developing uh, common strategies. Uh, many thanks to Ilga for this opportunity, as well as a follow up uh, over the years to have open the doors to the, uh, of the Council of uh, Europe and uh, various local authorities. Finally, we had a voice in the Parliament forcing states to question themselves. The seat of uh, my voice uh, of why Europe is placed and growing. Uh, activists from other countries join us. After four years of pregnancy, uh, OE Europe was born and recognized. Our seat gives you a multitude information, multi language uh, brochures, and keeps you informed. Uh, of our action and results. Uh, our first victory for following the third uh, international forum in 2013, Malta adopts 
its uh, legislation convince non-life saving intervention on children. Uh, other countries limit themselves to adding NICs or to birth certificates and ID cards and to making just recommendation uh, to the medical community without prohibiting the, uh, pro oh, la, la, prohibiting uh, these practices which are, are not in accordance with the right of physical integrity. Other countries uh, don't want to hear anything and continue uh, the inhuman practice. So there is still a lot of work for uh, Europe for the next few years before reaching the targets everywhere. I'm so happy to see that since 2015, the movement has grown, and especially that many young people are getting involved and taking over for a better future. In view of the current uh, situation, I wish them much perseverance because I fear that our human rights are not a priority in the various national governments. So please don't stop. Finally, I would like to say Ilga TGU, Elliot organization, all donors, and all helping hands. Without them, we would not be here today. Finish. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you so much for all your kind words and for your speech. It was amazing and very interesting to learn more about the history and listen to everything that you had to say. And now, continuing with our program, we have a couple of special messages that I'm very happy to share with you. And I'm going to show you is from amazing Evelyn Paradis, who is the executive director of ILGA Europe. Let me just share my screen. Okay, yes, now I know how to do it. And please listen to Evelyn. Evelyn, take it away. Well, dear OII Europe friends, um, I was asked to say a few words for your fifth anniversary. And I got to think that I'm I'm a lucky person who got to be in the front seat as a, to bear witness to your incredible journey over the past nearly a decade since I started to get to know many of you. Um, you have given me the gift of your trust and your friendship um, by allowing me and inviting me to be part of strategic planning sessions with you uh, many different meetings, but also inviting me to be part of fun adventures like playing tourists around at world conferences at ILGA World. Um, and through all of that, I've gotten to know many of you, I've been very lucky, and gotten to know OIA Europe as a community of people who are determined, smart, full of integrity, courageous, incredibly fun, forward-looking, and who care deeply about each other. Um, and so it doesn't come as a surprise to me that you have seen so much success, both in terms of political advances, but also in terms of the organization that you've built in such a, in such a short time. So happiest of birthday, dear friends at OIA Europe, and I wish you many, many more successes in the near future. Uh, for intersex people in Europe, but I know your reach goes way beyond the region. Happy birthday and congratulations. Thank you so much, Evelyn, for your kind words. And it's a pleasure to have you here tonight with us. 
And continuing with the messages, next video I want to share with you is a message from uh, Miltos Pavlou, I'm very sorry if I'm pronouncing this name uh, incorrectly, from European Union's Agency for Fundamental Rights. Dear friends, two years ago, together with OIA Europe and many others, we started working on the LGBTI survey, the first ever large EU survey to hear the voices of intersex persons. Thanks also to your support, about 1,600 intersex respondents in 30 European countries shared with us their life experiences, their hardships, their concerns. We found that intersex persons suffer more than any other LGBTI group from discrimination, physical or sexual violence, harassment, social isolation. Let this celebration be also a moment of reflection on how we need and we can step up our efforts to improve the lives of intersex persons, to protect and respect their fundamental rights on a long way towards equality. We'll go it together. I wish you a great celebration for five years of work for the betterment of our societies. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to turn on my microphone. It happened. Uh, yeah, thank you so, so much, Mildes, for this amazing message. And before I uh, let them continue, uh, just one uh, quick word. Uh, first of all, I want to remind you that in the Facebook Live, in the description, you have the link to donate. And if you donate today, after, during the party, 50 euros or more, you will receive a, a special surprise package from us. So please don't forget to include your mailing address. And the second thing that I want to mention is that uh, tomorrow we are having, at the same time, we're having the after party, which will be a continuation of today's party, during which we'll uh, present to you our My Intersex Story book and we'll read out personal stories of intersex people from Europe. So it will be really nice to see you at our after party tomorrow. And now then, please continue announcing our next videos. Yeah, we're not over yet with the videos. So the next two ones are a special treat because um, when going through our files, we found two videos that we shot originally just for internal use, just for us to remember um, to very important events. The one being um, the 25th of September, uh, the other one, the new office, uh, the first Y Europe office that we got at TGUs. So Irene, please screen the two videos. Yeah, so basically this is the video um, that was shot when we first decided or looked and decided to, to, to get one office room um, as sub-renting, so sub-renting one office room 
um, with TGU at their office. And that was 2017. And Our first office, yes. First office. Okay. And we shot yes. the video to show because we were, of course, spread all over Europe to show everybody um, how that office looked like. And um, yeah, so basically that's that video. Yeah, and you're going to see it right now. Yes, Ince was behind the camera. And thank you so much, everyone, for your kind comments. And yeah, it's so amazing to look into our history and get some information and those little and to see how far we've come. And now, continuing with our pleasure, I'm happy to announce a speech from my amazing friend, Audrey Gertrud. Audrey, please. We hear you. You hear me? Okay, so it's Irene who froze. <laughs> um, should I? I will start, I guess. <laughs> um, so, dear intersex people, dear intersex activists, dear intersex family, dear OIA Europe, today is your birthday, and in some way, it is also mine. I do not want to talk about me, but I guess I will, at least at the beginning of this speech. Because you, OIA Europe, you have changed my life. It has not even been three years, but in two weeks it will. In two weeks, it will be three years since I met you for the very first time. I was in, it was in Brussels at the Young Intersex Activist Meeting. I was at a job interview to be hired as a hostess when at, for an event when I received an email from you, our first email exchange from now regular ones. Your first email I received, the first email I received, and you told me I was accepted, that I received a scholarship to attend the Young Intersex Activist Meeting. Me, Audrey, barely out, unsure about which terminology to use to speak about those people who are like me. Me, Audrey, who studies business and has never been to a protest. Me, Audrey, who still, still feels awkward talking about my medical experience as a harmful practice. Me, I could not believe it. I was over the moon. How exciting and how frightening. I was so thrilled to meet you, OIA Europe. You know what I did when I received this email? Well, I left the job interview because I was not going to go there. I was going to go to Brussels. Meeting you was way more important to me than this job. So I left the casting and job interview. I took a train, ate with my parents, and went on the good old Google to make sure I knew everything about intersex human rights and what words were okay to use and which ones were not, making sure I would not embarrass myself in front of those who I believed to be the most, in to be the most amazing human beings. I am an intersex activist. Oh, I said so. I guess this gives me enough legitimacy to attend this event. I tried to reassure myself. Me, Audrey, at an OII Europe and intersex event. Who would have thought? Not me. I was so scared. I really was when I arrived, 
when I arrived in Brussels, found my way to the Ibis Louise and thought, what the hell am I doing here? But these few days were the most magical, life-changing, amazing few days of my life. Uh, it seems a lot, but believe me, I am not exaggerating a, a bit. This was the beginning of something new, a new journey, a new life, a new way. This was me finally fitting in somewhere fully without feeling like I should act a certain way, look a certain way, think a certain way. I could just be me and being me was enough. Enough to be an activist, enough to be intersex, enough to speak with some people of uh, some people of the some of the people I have always been looking up to. Enough. And I said, well, I said it to myself, it's also enough with the shame, stigma and isolation. I did my coming out through an OII Europe video. I co-founded an organization, spoke a lot about intersex, research, research, and researched some more on the topic, which now is my job. Yes, intersex studies and intersex activism is what I do now. Uh, who would have thought? <laughs> Definitely not me. In three years, thanks to you and your ways, thanks to you and your trust, thanks to you and your work, I am transforming my journey. From shame to pride, from isolation to community, from secrecy to knowledge, and all this thanks to you. And what is the most incredible, dear OII Europe, is that you are not doing this to me, you are doing this to us, to all of us. You are transforming generations of people's lives. From the ones who are older and finally feel safe to talk about their realities to the intersex child who was born today somewhere in Europe right now. In five years, you have moved mountains. We now have an international and regional uh, human rights on our side, thanks to you. We now have community events with intersex children and their parents, adults and other people, thanks to you. We now have intersex culture, and history, thanks to you. We now, we now have words, documents, brochures, flyers, videos, support, experience, best practice, all this thanks to you. We now have a strong European intersex community to fight for our fundamental human rights, for our rights to bodily integrity, for our rights to self-determination, for the best interests of intersex children. I cannot believe how much you have empowered me how much you have empowered us, what role you've played in my life, in my parents' life, in the lives of so many intersex people around the globe. We can now roar like dinosaurs, making our voices heard. You are truly heroic. Thank you, OI Europe, and happy birthday. Voilà. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, Audrey, for your words and for sharing these wonderful memories with all of us. Um, and they should not only be memories because we promised that while you will work hard to create new opportunities for many people to join the intersex community and be empowered and able to be out and proud and great and the intersex people that they are and the great families and friends and allies of intersex people that you are. Now, unfortunately, the party has to come to an end. We hope that you had a great time and that you will have a lot of joyful memories of this night to take home with you. Thanks so much for having been here um, and celebrated with us. And everybody have a wonderful evening, morning, night, wherever you are in the world. And happy birthday to all of us. <laughs>